Last year, I reviewed the Ecovax T8 for the simple reason that it changed the way I felt about robot vacuum cleaners. Where once I thought they weren't necessarily adequate, I had my mind changed to feeling like I couldn't live without one. A bit like my dishwasher. But there was one comment that quite a few of you guys had, and that was about the sheer cost of it. At nearly £650, the T8 wasn't exactly a cheap option, so I wanted to find out if a cheaper offering from Ecovacs performs in a way that sufficiently comes close to the extremely high bar that the T8 has set for me. So in this case, I want to focus on these two robots from Ecovacs, the N79, but more importantly, this, the N8. There's a good reason why I want to direct my focus on the N8 over the N79 in my hunt for the best value option from Ecovacs, and I'll come on to why shortly. But just look at this thing. It looks sleek, it looks futuristic, and I love it in white. It has some fantastic navigation tech which allows it to traverse a varied amount of terrain. It's capable of cleaning your house with 2,300 PA units of suction, which is automatically boosted when the carpet is detected. It can also simultaneously mop the floor for you and has an inbuilt water reservoir for this very task. Full of tech, full of specs, but does it hold up to the job? Design-wise, the N8 and T8 actually have a very similar aesthetic, other than the fact this is white and that one was black. But both have this large periscope-style section on the top that gives them both true mapping DTOF navigation, which is absolutely integral to getting the best cleaning experience, in my opinion, and something that some of the cheap models like this, the N79, doesn't have. Now, DTOF is essentially an advanced laser depth mapping system that provides an accurate reading of surrounding objects. And it's ultimately the reason why I think the N8 is possibly the best option from Ecovacs in respect to value. Now, the main reason for my love of DTOF functionality is that it allows a full map to be generated that is both accurate and consistent and aids with obstacle detection. The N79 and other cheaper models of robot vacuum generally are only capable of generating a map through the contact sensing alone on the front of the robot. Now, while this tends to be more economical and lighter on the wallet, this type of mapping is nowhere near as accurate and makes cleaning a lot less efficient and less smart. The DTOF sensor is one of the best sensors a robot vacuum can have. An alternative technology that companies could use is LDS navigation. DTOF generally has about a 50% greater detection distance and also four times the accuracy with smaller obstacles like table legs or less permanent obstacles like shoes, which is why it's a technology that I couldn't live without. And being on the top of the robot protected in a fully encased unit, it means that it's got greater range and essentially it's a lot less likely to fail or get obstructed from dust or dirt. It does mean that the profile is a little bit bigger than models without it like the N79 but it's just 18 millimeters tall on top of it and I'm quite happy to take that minimal hit on height because of the advanced mapping that that particular sensor allows you to do. Now as soon as you start the robot up for the first time it uses this DTOF sensor to build an incredibly detailed map automatically but other than being interesting to see the floor plan of your house laid out like that. The detailed mapping allows you to set specific room cleaning requirements, meaning that you can run it through the kitchen twice or vacuum the rug in the living room twice to get the dog hair or mushed watsits that your children might have decided to decorate it with. It's got so much flexibility in that it also allows you to fine tune other things like increasing suction in certain areas or adding a mopping cycle in a particular room and even setting virtual boundaries on the map for the robot to avoid. In my case, I use it to avoid the dog bed because Monty is utterly terrified of it.
Now I know I just briefly mentioned mopping there. Like the T8 I tried before, the N8 has both vacuum and mopping capabilities. Although I haven't tested the mopping function out due to my hard floors being a type of stone which seems to go a bit funny with normal water anyway. So I have to use a specific chemical on it. But fortunately the N8 is able to operate the function of vacuuming and mopping individually, which means you don't need to do both. I do have some further thoughts on this, but I'll come back to that later on. But this is yet another reason why the N8 outclasses cheaper alternatives like the N79, which is only capable of vacuuming. Now, talking on that point, it's important to take a look at how well the vacuum function works on the N8. I've chosen three different mulched substances. The first is polystyrene, quite big chunks but super light, and I wanted to see how this would be affected by the airflow of the N8. Next up is what's it, because that's all my daughter leaves lying around crushed into the floor, and lastly, some sugar, which is definitely not cocaine. On the first pass down one side, you can see the polystyrene gets blown everywhere. But hold that thought, we'll come back to this in a moment. On the first pass over, it does a remarkable job of picking up the mushed in watsits and pile of sugar, without flinging too much around. And by the second pass, almost all of it has been cleared up. The polystyrene, however, which has now been blown to the corner of the kitchen, is then picked up when it has nowhere else to go, as the N8 finishes off its cleaning cycle at that side of the room. All in all, a great success, and it performs particularly well at picking up a range of items. It's worth mentioning here that one of my biggest reservations about robot vacuum cleaners wasn't necessarily their ability to pick up generic stuff like Watsits, but how it handles pet hair, because I've got obviously big dogs with lots of hair. Now I talked more extensively about this in my T8 review, but to summarize, the N8 uses a very similar system. And if you do have lots of pet hair, you can remove the large wheel underneath to stop it getting tangled. But if you're happy detangling it once every few weeks, then leave it in because it makes a big, big difference. And Ecovacs give you a tool inside the N8 itself to allow you to cut all of the tangled hair inside that gets on that wheel. To summarize what I discovered in my T8 review is that these far exceeded my expectations when it came to dealing with pet hair. And the N8 is no different. It meets that high bar that the T8 set for this, largely because it has that almost identical construction underneath. Once you've finished vacuuming, it's as simple as taking out the receptacle can like this, pressing the button on the bottom, it opens up and you empty it into your bin. Dead, dead simple. But this is where I have one slight criticism, and that's that Ecovacs have yet to make a vacuum-only model with this type of technology. As I've said already, mopping isn't suitable in my house, and let's say I had a house where everything was carpeted, including the kitchen, which would be horrible, but I'm sure there's someone out there that has carpet in their kitchen, then you're not gonna want that mopping function. And I would rather have a larger receptacle than an extra reservoir on the back for the water. I mean, that's a, actually it's not that much space, realistically speaking, but still that could be added together to make a really big, large receptacle. Hmm. With the large amount of crumbs that my one-year-old daughter leaves around and all the mud and dog hair that gets put everywhere every single day, I do have to empty that bin on a daily basis. It's not an issue, it's just something that I would have preferred to have had a much bigger receptacle, but there is a solution. And that's by the way of the automatic waste bin that works with specifically the N8 and not the N79. Yet another reason why you might go for the N8 over something like this. This works by essentially replacing your charging dock with that automatic bin. When it returns to charge, it then evacuates its bowels into the bin sat above that charging dock, which is an awesome feature. And supposedly that can hold up to 30 days of dirt, which would be ideal for me rather than having to empty it out every single day. The only problem for me is where I keep it at the moment, and that's under a fridge in a little cave so I'd then need to move it out and have it somewhere a little bit more obvious. It's under there so that my child doesn't pick it up off the floor. 
Now, the cost of the N8 at the time of this review is on offer at around £250, which is insane value. Even at the RRP of 399 I still think it's a super reasonable price, especially when considering the more expensive T8 model, whose RRP is £650. But if you can get it at 250 quid, I would snap it up immediately because you won't find a better robot vacuum for the price. But the real question is to answer what I set out to do right at the very beginning, and that's find a cheaper alternative to the T8. And I think I absolutely have done. I still like the extra features that the T8 has, but for those that might might not want all the bells and whistles and certainly not wanting to pay that several hundred pounds more then the N8 I think is by far the best option out there and as I said early on there's a line that I would draw to how cheap I would go because I want a feature set that I believe makes for a decent cleaning experience and the N8 is that line. Products like the N79 just don't hold up when compared to models like the N8 that has that DTOF sensor. So if it's a choice between these two, then I will absolutely recommend the N8. And yes, it absolutely has met the bar the T8 has set for me. But I guess what surprises me the most is that the N8 is far cheaper than I anticipated and has way more advanced features for the price than I expected. And to bring some kind of conclusion to this episode, if you haven't already got a robot vacuum cleaner, then the N8 is possibly the best value introduction you could have to this wondrous world of household robots. They've absolutely blown my expectations out of the water, and like I said at the beginning, I can no longer live without one. But what I can say is that there is a line, and unfortunately, robots like the N79 just don't do it for me. But this is incredible. Guys, if you liked today's episode, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and notification bell. Have you already got a robot vacuum cleaner? Let me know in the comments what you have. Maybe you've got an EcoVax one. Let me know what you think of it. Other than that, guys, I will see you back for another episode of Studio Reviews soon.